no smoking smoking can cause lung diseases by damaging your airways and the small air sacs found in your lungs the lung diseases like lung cancer emphysema and chronic bronchitis can occur due to smoking to know more about the smoking disorders and the functions of lungs let us log into today's lesson good morning my dear children I am very happy to meet you all back in the biology class. Hope you are doing good and staying safe. Integrity. Doing something right at all times and all circumstances. Whether someone is watching or not. It takes having courage to do right thing. No matter what the consequences will be. What does Bible talk about integrity? Bible says the just man walketh in his integrity, his children are blessed after him. If you walk, walk in integrity, your generations will be blessed. With that blessing note, let us go into today's lesson. Before we start the new lesson, shall we recall what we discussed in the previous class? In the previous class, we discussed about the respiration and breathing, functions of respiration, organs involved in respiration, human respiratory system, features of respiratory surfaces and steps involved in human respiration. What are we going to learn today? Look at the picture. Can you see the organ? Yes, you have a pair of lungs. What is the, what's the main function of lungs? Respiration, breathing. Now, In the previous class, we have learnt about the respiratory system in man and today, what is the lung doing? It doing the inspiration and expiration the mechanism of breathing the mechanism of respiration we're going to learn about the mechanism of respiration in today's class and some of the diseases occur in the uh, in the respiratory tract okay let's learn the topic as we discussed the mechanism of breathing so what are the various steps involved in the breathing number one the movement of air between the atmosphere and the lungs Ventilation or breathing. So the movement of air between the atmosphere lung is called breathing. We inhale and exhale that's called breathing. Okay. Uh, the inspiration and expiration are the two phases of breathing. So we said the air between the atmosphere lungs is called breathing. Breathing involves two phases. One is inspiration another one is the expiration. Okay. What is inspiration? Inhaling the air. The simple process. Inspiration is nothing but the movement of atmospheric air into the lungs. And expiration is the movement of air, alveolar air, alveolar air out, out of the lungs, diffuse out of the lungs. The expansion and contraction of the lungs by the few organs like diaphragm, ribs and intercostal muscles. So the breathing occur with the help of three structures which help the lungs to uh, undergo inspiration expiration what are the three structures one is called a band of muscles which is called diaphragm just below the lungs and above the abdomen number two is called the ribs we have 12 pairs of ribs along with the ribs the muscles which is which attach the ribs are called intercostal muscles now these three structures are helpful du during the uh, process called breathing okay as I told you, there are two phases of breathing. The first phase is called inspiration. Inhaling the air, atmosphere, atmospheric air reaches the lungs. Okay, so what are other events happen during inspiration? The initiated, it is initiated by the contraction of diaphragm. As I told you, diaphragm is a band of muscle. Now, this inspiration is initiated by the diaphragm and even the external intercostal muscle. As I told you, there are there's a muscle which connect with the ribs are called intercostal muscle the muscles which is outside the ribs are called external intercostal muscle inside they are called internal intercostal muscle so for the inspiration the lungs is inspired the air with the help of diaphragm and the external intercostal muscles pulls it which pulls the ribs and sternum upwards during inspiration the ribs and uh, sternum push upwards and Outward uh, and outward to increase the volume of thoracic chamber. Why the ch thoracic chamber volume should be increased so that it can accompany the air inside the uh, chest cavity. It's, it forces the lungs to expand. Once the cavity is expanded, it allows the lungs to expand 
the pulmonary volume and the lungs. Why the pulmonary volume to be increased? Because the air should come and reach the lungs. Now the next process called, next phase is called expiration. So what is happening during expiration? The pressure within the lung, which are expiration nothing but the air should go out, breathe out. Okay. The pressure within the lungs is higher than the atmosphere. Okay. When we uh, inspire and expire, always the pressure in the lungs will be higher than the atmosphere. So the relaxation of diaphragm allows the diaphragm and sternum to turn to the dome shape. This is called dome shape. So once the diaphragm become relaxed, okay, become dome shape along with the sternum and uh, the internal intercostal muscle, the muscle inside the ribs are called internal intercostal muscle. The internal intercostal muscle contracts and pulling the ribs downwards, it pulls the ribs downwards. And also it reduces the thoracic cap, cap space, or thoracic volume and the pulmonary volume too, which results in increase the intrapulmonary pressure it increases the pressure inside, which causes the expulsion of air. As pressure increases inside the lungs, they expel the air outside from the lungs. Let's learn the term about a respiratory volume. What is respiratory volume? The volume of air present in various phases of respiration. <clears throat> How much air present in the lungs or in the thoracic cavity or in the alveoli? So the volume of air present in the Phases of respiration is called respiratory volume. Now, there are four phases of uh, respiratory volume. The first one is called total volume, <clears throat> shortly called TV. The amount of air inspired, inhaled or expired with normal breath, which is called 500 ml. Okay. The tidal volume increases during the vigorous exercise. When we do exercise, this volume will be very, very fast. As you all know, when you run far, when you walk faster, you breathe very hard. Okay. So normally it is 500 ml, the amount of air go in and come out is called the total volume. The second one is called inspiratory reserve volume. <clears throat> what is inspiratory reserve volume? IRV. The additional volume of air a person can inspire by forceful inspiration. Okay. Normally we inhale 500 ml, sometimes we inhale a large amount around 2,500, 3,000 ml of uh, air, okay, we are forcefully inhale, again when you run very fast, no, we forcefully inhale the air, now that is called inspiratory reserve volume, now what is expiratory reserve volume, ERV is nothing but the additional volume uh, or air a person can forcefully exhale, okay, exhale or expel by forceful expiration which is called the expiratory reserve volume, ERV, Normally, it is 1000 to 1100 ml. Next, the residual volume, RV. The volume of air remaining in the lungs after a forceful expiration. Approximately 1100 to 1200 ml. Okay. Let's learn about the how much capacity the lung can uh, bear okay, at a time of respiration. The respiratory capacities. First one is vital capacity. What is vital capacity? The maximum volume of air that can be moved out of out during the single breath following a maximum inspiration. I repeat, the vital capacity VC is nothing but the maximum volume of air can be moved out during the single breath. So VC is equal to ERV plus TV plus IRV. What is TV? Total volume and IRV is inspiratory reserve volume next one is uh, inspiratory capacity the total volume of air the person can inhale after normal expiration is called IC nothing but TV plus IRV expiratory capacity the total volume of air of a person can exhale after the normal inspiration uh, it's called uh, expiratory capacity Example, uh, which is equal to TV plus ERV. Finally, total lung capacity. How much capacity of air the lung can have it at a time? TLC. The total volume of air within the lungs that can accommodate after the forceful inspiration approximately around 600 ml. So, TLC, which is equal to VC plus RV. Now, the sum of the respiratory capacity of our lungs. Something called dead space. 
Now, what is dead space? Sometimes some of the air inspired, when we inhale the air, some air inspired will never go to the ga gauges exchange, will not go to the alveoli to get the exchange of gases, okay, area, but fills the respiratory passage, maybe like pharynx or larynx or trachea or, al uh, or uh, bronchiole, bronchi, it fills the respiratory passages where the exchange of gas does not occur, which is not involved in gaseous exchange. I repeat, some of the gases, they do not go to the place where the gas can exchange. It will stay in the respiratory passage. Around 150 ml is a dead space of a expiratory, uh, respiratory uh, process. So now let us see if the exchange of gases. As you all know, we inhale oxygen and we exhale carbon dioxide. How does this gases get exchanged the alveoli as you all know alveoli there are millions of alveoli in each lungs the alveoli which is the primary site of exchange of gases they uptake the oxygen they we intake the oxygen okay so it reaches the alveoli as you all know through nostrils trachea okay then it reaches the bronchi bronchioles finally it reaches the alveoli the uptake of oxygen and release of carbon dioxide between the blood and tissues by simple diffusion. What is simple diffusion? The movement of air from higher concentration to lower concentration through the partial pressure. Now, what is partial? Uh, how can we measure the partial pressure? Now, PO2 is partial pressure of oxygen. Okay. PCO2 is partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Now, due to the pressure, pressure gradient, the oxygen from the alveoli enter into the blood. Where is the blood there? I told you alveoli completely covered, richly covered with the capillaries. So due to the pressure, the oxygen enter inside the, from the alveoli to the bloodstream and reaches the tissue of a body. Okay. So again, in return, the carbon dioxide enter back into the blood tissues. Okay. Reaches the uh, capillaries. Then finally, the, through the capillaries, the carbon dioxide reaches the alveoli for elimination for exhalation okay so pco2 the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is much higher than the partial pressure of oxygen okay it's nothing but it's around 20 to 20, 25 times is higher let's learn about some of the pigments involved in the respiration there are two important pigments one is called hemoglobin the other one is called methemoglobin what are the facts about hemoglobin what is hemoglobin? Now, it's a pigment which gives red color to the blood. Okay. Now, it's a conjugated protein and 4% of is heme, so iron particle and 96% of is protein particle which is nothing but the histone. The molecular weight is about 68,000 which contains 4 iron which combines with the oxygen molecule. The other one is called methemoglobin. Now, here the methemoglobin do not combine with oxygen and it is also in the form of ferric state. Let's look at the transportation of gases, how the carbon dioxide and oxygen gets transported. The molecular oxygen carried in two ways. <clears throat> one, it's bound to its uh, hemoglobin and go to the RBC. Another one, it also dissolves in the plasma. 3% of dissolved form, uh, form and 97% of directly as oxyhemoglobin, which is regulated by partial pressure of oxygen. And the other one is in alveoli, it's due to the high partial pressure of oxygen and low carbon dioxide partial pressure, low temperature and low pH. But in tissue, it's just vice versa. So an oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve is obtained at the end of the uh, respiration. The curve is S-shaped curve uh, for partial oxygen, uh, partial pressure of oxygen. The finally, the curve, S-shaped curve becomes flattens. Normally, 100 ml of oxygenated blood can deliver 5 ml of ox uh, oxygen to the tissues. So, 100 ml of blood can give rise to 5 ml of oxygen to the tissues. Let's look at how the carbon dioxide gets transported. Okay. It says blood transports carbon dioxide from tissues to cell to lungs from the tissues to the lungs from lungs we exhale the carbon dioxide in how many ways three ways number one first way dissolved in plasma the carbon dioxide dissolved in plasma around seven seven to ten percent of 
first made of carbon dioxide is transported in a dissolved form in the plasma second way of transportation of carbon dioxide bound to hemoglobin 20 to 25% of dissolved carbon dioxide is bound and it is carried in the rbc as carbamino hemoglobin thirdly as carbonated iron in plasma around 70% of carbon dioxide is transported as bicarbonate ion in these three ways the carbon dioxide get transported outside the body let's look at some of the events in the inspiration expiration let's start with the term inspiration inhaling the air the respiratory center initiates a stimuli during the inspiration the impulses are carried to the inspiratory impulse from the brain carried to the inspiratory muscles as you all know the intercostal muscles through the nerves the diaphragm and the inspiratory muscles get contact the thoracic volume increase why does it increase to accompany the air coming inside okay increase as the chest wall expands later the intrapulmonary pressure is reduced the chest pressure is reduced the alveolar pressure decreases then the atmospheric pressure that the, uh, so that only the air can uh, collect inside the lungs the air flow into the alveoli until the alveolar pressure equalizes the atmospheric pressure first it was getting reduced for the air to accompany once the air accompanied it allow the equalize the pressure the alveolar pressure equalizes the atmospheric pressure and the alveolar gets flattened the alveolar uh, it gets flat inflated flat let's look at the events of expiration respiratory center terminates the stimuli again it uh, gets a stimuli during the expiration the diaphragm the band of muscles and the inspiratory muscles get relaxed okay the intercostal muscle get relaxed diaphragm get relaxed the chest wall contracts and the thoracic cav volume get reduced when it increases to accompany the air it reduces to release the air the alveolar pressure here is increases then the atmospheric pressure there uh, in the inspiration the alveolar pressure was in decreased so that it can accompany the air finally the, it get flattened but here the alveolar pressure increase that the air can push outside okay that it pushes outside increase the atmospheric pressure the air is sent out due to the contraction of alveoli the air flows out of the alveoli until the alveolar pressure gets equalizes the atmospheric pressure and the alveoli gets deflated at the end of expiration this is how the inspiration and expiration takes place in our body let's look at some of the disorders of respiratory system what is a common disorder first let us look at asthma now how does asthma occur now it's a fear disease or a disorder which narrowing or an inflammation of the bronchi bronchi as you know is a small pipe trachea divides into bronchi and bronchiole so the inflammation bronchi and bronchiole and the difficulty in breathing during the asthmatic condition the common allergens for uh, asthma are dust due to the dust or drugs or uh, pollen grains uh, certain food items like fish prawn also can uh, leads to asthmatic condition the next second one is called emphysema now during this emphysema condition the it's a, it's a chronic breathlessness which is caused by gradual breakdown of thin walls of alveoli already al alveoli walls are very thin so that the air can exchange because the uh, thin wall of alveoli uh, alveoli uh, infection this it leads to emphysema the total surface surface area of the gas is extinct so the widening of the alveoli is called emphysema and the major cause for this disease smoking okay so we're smoking which reduces the respiratory surface of alveoli walls third this is called bronchitis okay the bronchi when it gets inflated to uh, pollute the smoke and or cigarette smoking which causes bronchitis the symptoms are cough shortness and very short breath and sputum in the lungs also the uh, symptoms of bronchitis next one is pneumonia during pneumonia the inflammation inflammation of lungs occur it's due to the bacterial or viral infection the common symptoms are sputum production nasal congestion 
shortness of breath and even the sore throat. Next one is tuberculosis, commonly called TB. How does TB occur? Due to the bacteria called tuber Mycobacterium tuberculosis. This infection mainly occurs in lungs and bones. The collection of fluid between the lungs and the chest wall is a main complication of this disease. There are some of the diseases called occupational respiratory disorders where the disorders due to the, the work condition. When they work in the industries, when they do grinding or stone breaking or construction, because of the dust, they will get some uh, allergic reaction which can also affect the lungs. Effect of smoking. Is smoking good for health? No. The smoke can completely affect especially the lungs. Uh, it might lead to various sickness and disorders also. So inhaling the smoke from burning tobacco, uh, which is a chemical including the nicotine, tar, carbon, carbon monoxide, ammonia, arsenic, everything is mixed in the chemical. Okay. And it also damages the cardiovascular system, which makes the heartbeat very, very fast. Can also narrow your blood vessels, which increase the blood pressure and may also cause lung cancer, mouth cancer. So we should avoid smoking. Smoking is not good for our health. The smoke, which uh, consists of a lot of chemical, can harm is harmful to our health. So uh, if, you, if you find people around you smokes, tell the people the consequences of smoking and uh, disorders, disease they get because of smoking. Children, I have come to the end of this today's lesson. We have completed the topic respiration and respiration today. I hope you understood the lesson. Read the lesson carefully. Watch the video. Play the Kahoot. And also attend the test. Okay. Uh, make sure you write the test and submit the paper on time. I am expecting all 23 of you to come to the test and submit the paper before 11 p.m. Take out your biology classwork. Take a fresh page and draw the logo for no smoking. Okay. With that, I would like you to draw the mind map of the effects of smoking. Once you finish drawing the effect of smoking, and I would like you to write how to overcome the smoking. What as a student, how can you help others? Or how what are the advices you can give for others for stop smoking? Okay, that's the work I'm giving you today. So complete this work and uh, during the next class, in the Zoom class, I would like to check all your work in the classwork. Now that's all from today's class children. Have a good day and goodbye.